I'm wondering, Tom, if you want to just jumping in on, on that opening piece around what that role of business is, what are your thoughts? Like what comes to mind for you when you think of the critical role of that pursuit of wisdom for us as business leaders? You know, we easily lose track of the history of business and the purposes behind business throughout most of human history. In too many people's minds, business has just become a money machine. You know, how can we increase our profits? How can we increase uh, shareholder value? Business was never meant to be just a money machine. It was meant to be an engine for human good. And part of that was the financial side. It always has been, but that wasn't the entirety of the picture. It's really interesting to me. You go back to the great philosophers, and I love it that you mentioned philosophy as, you know, pursuit of wisdom, philo, sophia, love of wisdom, an, uh, an object of love. When you don't have it, you seek it. When you have it, you embrace it. So philosophy is just the seeking and embracing of wisdom, insight for, for living. Business is a, a way of living part of our lives not set apart from the rest of our lives, but continuous with the rest of our lives. And you know, it's it's an interesting thing. When I was doing my book um, long ago at this point, if Aristotle ran General Motors, which was not just about Aristotle and it wasn't just about General Motors, but it was a, about how any iconic great philosopher would advise any business of whatever size as to how to make things great. Um, I kept coming back to an insight Aristotle had in his book, The Politics, where, and he, he doesn't put it into words this simple, but rereading the politics over and over, I realized there was a formula throughout the book for human greatness, that human greatness always occurs through people in partnership for a shared purpose. And so you have three elements there. You have people, plural, partnership, a certain kind of relationship amongst those people, for a shared purpose, a guiding star for that relationship. So people in partnership for a shared purpose. Now, it used to be in most of human history that people got together in partnerships of all kinds. There were civic clubs, there were bowling leagues, there were tennis clubs, there were uh, social clubs and activities, and there still are, but that has really waned in American culture and often in cultures around the world. So we don't find ourselves in that many communal, collective, joint enterprise situations outside business. So it's become the case now increasingly that business is the one place where we reliably find people in partnership for a shared purpose. What's that purpose going to be? Is it just going to be financial? Well, it's hard to get people excited about that long term. And you can't really have people at their best, doing their best, producing their best, unless they're passionate about what they're doing. The right purpose can incite the right kind of passion. And that's what I've always been interested in, in bringing philosophy to business, that kind of deeper insight that will help people dig deeper and rise higher at the same time. Yeah, I love that. I, I grew up, as I mentioned, and Mark Strom, who introduced me to you, always used to talk about the idea of polis as that piece of the partnership for living well. What does this look like? How do we come together? And, and, and always connecting the idea of leadership to those you serve, to what is the purpose of, of what you're actually trying to achieve? Where are you trying to get to as, as a collective? I think that's a, a really important idea. 